Ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's a real pl pleasure for me to be here with you uh, this afternoon. I want to thank a good friend of mine, uh, John Chomiak, who had extended the invitation. And uh, there's no need to say, really, because all Albertans know uh, all of the wonderful work that Rotary does in all of the communities across Alberta. And uh, I've just had a brief chat uh, talking about uh, what your cl club is doing and what you plan to do in the future. And uh, there's no doubt about it that when it comes to volunteerism, uh, Alberta continues to be a leader uh, across the country of Canada in the number of volunteer hours uh, put in by individuals. I am uh, very grateful to have some time with you because it's going to allow me to just uh, share um, with you some of the government's uh, plans for the way forward. As you might uh, know, this is the beginning, uh, started for a busy season in government, and yes, uh, we do have uh, seasons in government. Uh, last week we had the speech from the throne. Uh, tomorrow uh, the budget will be introduced. We will be the first jurisdiction in Canada to introduce a budget and pass the budget. And the budget should, will be passed before the end of this fiscal year. Uh, I would assume it will be passed someplace around March 25th or fiscal year ends March 31st. And the reason being is that uh, now more than ever, the business community needs predictability. They want to know where the government is going in terms of its long-term plans, when we're going to balance the budget, and uh, some of the issues tied with larger kind of global shifts, economic shifts, that are appearing around the world. We'll uh, have a much shorter legislative uh, lineup uh, than we had over the last two years, but uh, the, the bills that we had passed is preparing uh, Alberta for growth and for continued growth. And, I uh, just want to share some thoughts of where we're at uh, with respect to the province. And at the end, I, I certainly, uh, whatever comes to mind from the, hopefully a shorter presentation, you'll uh, encourage some questions. Now let's start from where we're at. <coughs> it appears, and I say appears, that the economic recovery has begun, albeit modestly. Drilling forecasts for this year are up. Uh, they're not great, but uh, uh, they're certainly uh, better than last year. There are signs of uh, life in the oil sands again, uh, considerable uh, numbers of, of investment and several major expansions pr pr uh, proceeding. And this is all good economic news. There's some good economic news in agriculture side. Uh, uh, forestry is making, uh, very, very slow, but, but it is a comeback uh, in a very, very difficult economic environment. But we can't forget that even when the re recovery happens, it takes some time for govern government revenues to uh, recover. Uh, you first have to make profit, uh, you know, you, we tax that proper, proper, uh, uh, profit, unfortunately, as a government, uh, but it's the profit that we tax that we invest in uh, government programs. So while you're recovering in the private sector and you grow the economy of uh, Alberta and the country of Canada, uh, we need to watch our spending. We will also use our sustainability fund. Now this is our <coughs> cash savings and it was set aside to protect our programs uh, and our services. I remember years before <coughs> we had issues uh, tied to the most volatile revenue stream in North America. That was when the economy was solid, and we still had these revenue fluctuations as much as 15%. Well, with this worldwide recession, uh, that of course uh, brought about even further issues for Alberta in terms of our exports, which I can tell you our number one uh, country uh, for export is the United States, and our number one customer in the United States is California. So enough said because we know where California is today, given the general economy of the United States. The reason we set aside the sustainability fund, and uh, it's the sustainability fund, not the Heritage Savings Trust Fund. The Heritage Savings Trust Fund is a separate fund. It lost considerable money, money during the economic recession, down to 13 billion, it's up to about 15. We'll probably be up to where we started at 17 billion by the end of this year. So that's coming back uh, healthy, but that's a separate fund. That's for our grandchildren, our grandkids' grandchildren. Uh, that's when we run out of oil and gas, and if we don't transition to a, uh, 
a new technology-based uh, uh, economy, uh, that fund will come in handy. This is a separate fund set aside specifically for this kind of issue. I'm also going to tell you that we're not going to balance the budget by making massive cuts. Doing that uh, might save money, but uh, found out over the many years in government that uh, we will pay in other ways. And we've learned that uh, as a government and as Albertans. We're not going to throw open the floodgates and leave a bill for our children or our grandchildren to pay in the future. That's not the Alberta way, and it's not necessary. And why? Because we have different options than other provinces have. We have paid off. In the last economic uh, upswing, over $23 billion worth of debt. We've saved and invested nearly $25 billion when times were good. We've also put, since 19, uh, well, 2006, $19 billion cash in the ground. It's in sewers, it's in universities, it's in infrastructure related to water and to, and, and to highways. And since about 1996, about $48 billion. That is cash. We're not carrying any debt of that infrastructure. The only obligation we have on in infrastructure today is the infrastructure we're building, uh, the ring roads around Edmonton and Calgary, which are in the public-private partnership. Now, we're going to use the fiscal advantages uh, we've earned uh, over uh, the easy days, so to speak, to get us through the tough times. Tomorrow, we're going to strike a budget, um, or we're going to table a budget that strikes the right balance. The budget will be a little tougher. It is going to be considerably tougher than, than Albertans have become accustomed to, especially over the last 15 years. But it won't be nearly as bad as some are making it out either. And what we need to do is bridge the recession and put Alberta in the position to take full advantage of the recovery. As Albertans, we're not just content to ride out the storm. We want to position our province, positioned in such a way as to be an economic leader in this decade, just as it was in the past. And that's why we're going to continue investing in infrastructure during the downturn. I know we have a number of engineers here, and they can tell you that we are getting some unbelievable, unbelievable tenders on infrastructure, especially on the roadside. Uh, oil is down considerably, and uh, we have the money in the bank. I'd sooner build that infrastructure at 40% less uh, tender cost than competing with you as a private sector and paying 20, 30, 40% inflation a few years ago. And the infrastructure we're building is going to serve us well in the, in the future. Infrastructure is an economic enabler. It grows the economy. And that's why we have to make sure that we have the right infrastructure in place. So we're going to continue the investment uh, in Edmonton and Calgary on the ring roads, uh, dozens of new schools, uh, building uh, communities across the province. And we know when growth returns, we're going to need uh, all of the new infrastructure that's being built. We're also uh, going to have to be as smart, efficient, and innovative as possible. And uh, these are the qualities we need to, to look at to be competitive in a new economy that's taking shape globally. Just coming back from Abu Dhabi, we're losing some opportunity as the province of Alberta. I'm not talking about the country of Canada. I'm just talking about where we are as the province of Alberta. And we have to be more aggressive in, in chasing new markets diversifying our markets. We can't tie our tailbone to one market, and that's the United States. Today, we can't ship oil anywhere else except the United States. And notwithstanding all of the talk about some of these possible punitive measures that may be imposed in Alberta over carbon levels, there's one way of protecting the future generation, and that is to diversify our market for oil, and that's a pipeline to the West Coast. That's also diversifying our markets in agriculture, and uh, also in forestry. It was pretty difficult to sit in a very high-end restaurant in Abu Dhabi and eating Idaho beef. I've heard of Idaho potatoes, but not Idaho beef, which, you know, we've got, you know, we've got, we've opened the door, now let's pursue those markets. 